この番組はご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りしますこの番組は。The participating operators in this training are operatives of the other cell element. We extend our gratitude for their efforts. We also express our deepest thanks to the Korean Tac Guys Supply Depot, Net PX, for generously providing knee pads. Without them, the other cell element would have suffered knee injuries. Knee pads are a critical piece of combat gear for preventing injuries. They significantly boost the operator's confidence in action, making them an essential item that each individual must purchase personally. The other cell element is currently wearing knee pads from NetPX. Let's take a look at the attire. The other cell element is currently dressed in clothing suitable for rugged terrain training. The reason for wearing denim pants and jackets is first. They are easily purchasable at affordable prices in the market, making them easily accessible. The most important aspect when selecting tactical gear is not the quantity or quality, but the availability. You must actually be able to possess the equipment, not just desire it. Moreover, denim fabric is durable. Tough yet flexible, protecting the operator's skin during rough outdoor activities. In fact, during the Vietnam War, Navy SEALs favored jeans for operations in rugged jungle terrains. Matching tops and bottoms in denim fabric also enhance a sense of belonging and camaraderie. The distinct and characteristic appearance of denim. Can also help boost the combat will against communism that exists from South Korea's tragic history. Every fight is a clash of wills. In an era where anti communism and the spirit of combat are fading, boosting the morale and will to fight is a crucial part of warfare. Soldiers depicted in video games, movies, and YouTube military propaganda. Adopt cool poses and actions to the backdrop of heavy metal music. And such cool, heroic postures and actions are unconsciously learned by those directly exposed to the media. It's essential for operators to understand that the cool, heroic postures and actions shown in the media may be far from reality. The closer your body is to the ground, The smaller your exposure range becomes, thereby increasing your survival rate. This is a physical fact. However, people living in civilization have unconsciously learned to avoid getting close to the ground and terrain, viewing it as dirty, filthy, and unsanitary. Even those who consider themselves warfighters tend to unconsciously avoid getting close to the ground. Lo fi operators must deprogram this aspect. In this session, the other cell element rolled on the cold, wet ground, experiencing being tainted with mud, leaves getting damaged by rocks and thorns. Even without learning any tactical skills, just the experience of rolling on the ground makes a huge difference. Directly Experiencing the terrain is crucial because fighting includes battling the environment itself. The enemy is likely to apply strategies based on data from recent wars. There will be many drone attacks, and artillery focused attacks will also be prevalent. To minimize damage from such attacks, 
it's advisable to lie as flat as possible on the ground. Personal equipment should always be configured to suit the environment, actions and body type. The personal equipment and armour typically featured in military propaganda are designed to highlight the heroic appearance of the characters. The common form consists of heavy equipment centred around thick plate carriers. Plate carriers are very effective and essential modern personal equipment for body protection, especially effective in flat terrains with no obstacles. However, for the other cell element operating in rugged terrains with elevations and obstacles, plate carriers become extremely cumbersome items. The primary reason is their weight. For average conscripts, the weight of a plate carrier with plates is significant. It could become difficult to move before combat even begins, or it might become difficult even before moving. Furthermore, the form of plate carriers does not synergize with the actions warfighters need to take in this environment. Warfighters need to minimize their silhouette to escape from the scatter angle of gunfire and lie on the ground. They need to move while lying down, maintaining as low a profile as possible. However, because plate carriers concentrate the weight on the upper body and shoulders, they do not adequately distribute the load when taking low profile actions, making operators more tired. Additionally, when actually lying on the ground, it's impossible to maintain as low a profile as desired. And equipment located on the front of the plate carrier may also get damaged. Especially operators who have set up their equipment in a form suitable for military propaganda from various media will suffer more damage. For example, in such situations, if one had equipped magazine pouches without covers, dirt and leaves could enter inside the pouches. And in the case of double up magazine pouches, the problem would also double up. This is a serious consideration that must be made depending on the warfighter's operational environment. Here is the ideal form of personal equipment suggested by the lo-fi warfighting doctrine a war belt with thick padding to distribute the load on the waist, effectively with Daubler Oop magazine, pouches positioned on both sides of the waist. These magazine pouches must have covers and preferably no Velcro. Velcro creates loud and artificial noise in the mountains and a flat shaped medkit pouch is placed in the center of the waist. This is with consideration for lying face up on the ground and when boarding a vehicle. Additionally, an H-shaped harness is equipped to distribute the load to the shoulders, keeping the chest and stomach area free and flat. Warfighter can shift the weight to the center of the body, effectively distribute the load on the waist, minimizing combat fatigue, and also suitable for backpack wearing. On can be a highly utilitarian warfighter through this form of gear setting, compared to Westerners who generally have short waists and long legs. East Asians have the opposite body type. East Asians typically have longer waists and shorter legs, concentrating the weight towards the upper body of East Asians with longer waists increases the fatigue on the waist. Thus, this setup was designed for the body type of East Asians, aiming for efficiency in the energy used in combat, especially on difficult terrains. Indeed, the form of personal combat gear was almost finalized during World War I. Posture. Sexy American Special Forces veterans on YouTube often demonstrate a posture with the body straightened claiming its superior shooting stance. However, from a general perspective, 
such a posture has the lowest survival rate. The closer the posture is to the ground, the higher the survivability. Therefore, the combat posture that typical conscripts should learn is not the one shown by sexy American Special Forces veterans on the screens. Being closer to the ground and having a smaller silhouette is advantageous for survival. The crawling posture has been with the history of war and remains very important in modern times. Crawling became very important during World War I because it reduces the physical profile, making it very difficult for the enemy to conduct effective attacks. This is a posture that can increase survivability from most attacks in warfare. When moving sideways in this state, rolling to the side might be quick and comfortable, but there are times when carrying a backpack. If carrying a backpack, rolling is not possible. For such cases, practicing a method of moving quickly to the side using both arms and legs would be beneficial. The lo-fi warfighting doctrine proposes the posture platform called crouching. The warfighter bends the knees, leans the waist forward, and keeps the head up. Then the buttstock of the primary weapon is firmly secured between the armpits, pointing the muzzle forward in line with the sight. Securing the weapon tightly under the armpit is quite important. First, it provides psychological stability amidst the fear of the battlefield and allows for immediate firing when an enemy appears. And during movement, by bringing the center of gravity of the primary weapon closer to the body's center, it reduces fatigue and increases stability during movement. In this posture, the warfighter can move quickly and safely while reducing the silhouette and if more stability is required, one hand can be used to support movement on the ground. Ensure not to point the muzzle towards the ground during movement due to fatigue. Maintaining the muzzle up or high port posture is recommended. And when shooting is necessary, straighten the upper body to create a stable shooting posture and then open fire. Additionally, the crouching posture can naturally transition to the squat posture. The squat shooting posture is advantageous for East Asians with shorter legs. The lowest squat shooting posture can maintain a very small silhouette and from the lowest to the highest height, one can freely elevate the level and speed. The squat shooting posture in particular can provide a tactical advantage in densely grassed areas. Thus, the crouching to squat shooting, along with using one hand for additional movement speed and stability, creates a posture platform that perfectly balances with the body type of East Asians, the environment of the battlefield, and the dynamic actions required along with the personal equipment setting designed for it.